Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to look at property lists, also known as P lists, and we can use these to store data and be able to access data back in your application. So this tutorial we're going to really just look at how to create a property list and we'll be implementing using a property list in another video where we're going to work with tables. So I'm going to create a new project in Xcode and I'm going to choose a master detail application. And the really cool thing about the master detail application is that if you run it on an iPhone, it works like a navigation based application with a table view and a detail section. And if it runs on an iPad, it behaves like a split view based application. So in preparation for future development in working with our application, I'm going to choose the master detail application so that we'll be able to have a table view that will go to a detail view. So I'm going to click next and save my files. So I'm going to call this US Presidents and I'm going to not check storyboards. Uh, the only thing I'm going to check is to do the automatic reference counting. So I'll click next and save it. Okay, and right away I'm just going to go to the nib file so we can see what the interface looks like. And it's given us a table view on here. And I'm just going to run this in the simulator. We don't have any data coming in here yet, but you can just see what it looks like right out of the box. Okay, so our application right now there's no data coming in, but this is our table view and it's already given us what's called our master view and then once we have data in here we'll be able to tap and go to a detail view and you can see that our file system has been set up in the same manner we have a master view controller header an implementation file and nib file and then we have a detail view controller class files and interface file so in order to populate our table with some information, we have to have some data for it. Now there's a number of different ways that you can go about putting data into that table. We can create a list of arrays and you know, have this populate with arrays. We could have a database and get data from the database. But in this example for tables, we're going to create what's called a plist or a property list that will contain data that will be pulled into the table so that we can have our table view and then later on go to the detail view. So this demonstration is really going to focus on creating the data part of it and then we'll have other videos that will demonstrate how to take that data and put it into our table view. But in order to set this up for the beginning I wanted to make sure that we used the master detail application template. So about P lists or property lists. Look in the files that we have automatically with our project. I'm going to go into the supporting files and whenever you create a new application you automatically get an info P list. So you get your project name dash info P list. So just uh, as a basic starting point, you can see that this property list contains information about your application. Now your plist information is actually in XML format, and this is just a little bit of a more user-friendly version of it. So if I right-click on my plist file and I can choose Open as Source Code, you can see that this is the XML version of what we have in the other view. So you can edit it either directly in this code view or you can edit it back in the form view. So if I right click on this and go open as property list, it will take me back to this setting. So P lists, we automatically get one for our project that stores information about our application. They're also used for storing application preferences, so the user preferences. But that will be demonstrated in a separate tutorial for specifically for application preferences.
But if you understand the fundamentals of how plists are structured, then when you go to create them and use them for application preferences, it should be pretty easy. So in addition to the plists that you automatically get and the ones that you can use for application preferences, we can create our own property list and store data and information in there that can be used in your application. And plists can also be downloaded from a remote server. So if you wanted to keep up-to-date information in it and every time it's used it could be downloaded from a web server. So now let's go in and create a property list and then we'll start to populate it. In this example, our property list is going to contain a list of the U.S. presidents so that we'll, our application will be able to display in our table view. Each row will contain the name of the president and the years that they were in office. And then we'll be able to tap each one to get a detailed view of more information about that particular president. So that's going to be the goal, just setting up the property list and as I said, other videos, we will look at actually getting the table to connect to the property list and get the information from it. So to create our own property list, I'm going to go to File on the menu and choose New, File. And under iOS, you want to make sure that we choose Resource and then we're going to choose Property List. We're going to choose Property List to create our own and I'm going to call this instead of property list, I'm going to call it presidents. So we'll have a presidents P list. And we'll click create. Okay, and now in our supporting files, we have a presidents.p list. And right now, there isn't any data in here. So, how do we structure a property list? Let me bring up an example that might help to explain the structure a little more clearly. So here is a visualization of a property list for one entry for our presidents. Now our P list is made up of keys and values. And whenever you are creating a key, you want to keep in mind that it should be begin with a lowercase letter and it can't contain any white spaces. So don't put any spaces in here. Don't start it with a number or a capital. So simple words that explain or define what kind of data or information it holds. And each key must be unique. So I can't have another key called number or another key called name. So we're going to create a structure that will have these four keys and the information associated with each of our presidents under those keys. So here's how we do that. I'm going to go into our P list, which is now completely empty. And to add information, I'm just going to right click and choose Add Row. And then we're presented with a new item. And so my first item that I'm going to have is the number. I want to know what number the president is. And the type of information, instead of a string, is going to be an array because I'm going to have a list of several other numbers under here. So our key for number is going to have an array or a list of integers under it for the numbers of the presidents. So I'm going to click on this little triangle next to number and then I'm going to right click to add a row and then we'll have a listing under here. So this is going to be integers, so these are going to be numbers, and so that's going to represent president one. So I'm going to add another president or another number in here, so add row, and this would be for number two, add row for number three. Now I'm not going to go through every single president. I'm just going to do a few to get started so that we'll be able to test things. All right, so I have the first key in here, and then we have the values. Let me change these to numbers. And I'm doing these for numbers because later on if we wanted to check and have it maybe sort numerically or something like that, makes it a little easier to do it that way than with text strings. So that is our first key, right, is our number. So the second key is going to be the names of the first four presidents. So I'm going to collapse this and I'm going to right click and choose add row and these will be names 
And again, it's going to be an array, which will be a list. And now I want to start to add each of the names in here. So I'm going to click on the little triangle below and choose Add Row. And these will be strings, so this would be George Washington. And then I'll add another one. This will be John Adams. Right, so with each one, I'm just right-clicking, adding a row. And so I'm going to pause this and add in the other presidents. Okay, so I've added the other presidents' names in here. So to add the next key, now again, if I've been right-clicking. With this expanded, when I right-click and choose Add Row, it's adding one under this because this is what is selected. So you can either do um, Command Z to undo. You can also right click and choose um, Cut if you added something in by mistake. Or the other thing you can do is, let's say if I come in here and I added a row by mistake, I can also right click on it and choose Shift Row Left, right? So now it's on the same level as names and number. The next key is years, so this will represent the years that each one is in office. And again, this is going to be an array because we're going to have a list of the years. And now I'm going to right click and add the rows for each of the years that these presidents were in office. And again, I'll pause this and then come back so you don't have to sit here and watch me type. Okay, so I have the years listed in here, and you can start to see how this information is associated. President 1 goes along with the first item under names, so these item zeros, item 0, item 0 all match up for the first president. So this has been editing it in the plist form that we have, and if you wanted to edit in the XML version, we'll do this for the other key for party. So I'm just going to right click on this, open as source code. And this source code might make a little more sense than the other one that we just looked at for the applications plist. You can see how we have the key for number, and then we have an array of integers, we have a key for name, and then we have an array of names. So Following with this same format, I could just copy this section and I can paste. Now we can have a repeated keys and so this is going to be for their party. And so the first president had actually no official party. And then John Adams was a Federalist. Thomas Jefferson was considered Democratic Republican as well as was James Madison. So I can copy him and put them in. So now if I come back into my P list and I open as a property list, you can see that this has been added in here. So sometimes, depending on the way you like to work, it may be faster for you to work in this view. If you're familiar with XML formatting, you can just right click and go into the XML format. So in any case, right now we have a plist of data that is set up and ready to use in an application. And again, we'll be able to access this information through the keys, right? We have a key for number or name, years, and party, and we'll be able to access these different values.